So I want some organic gardening tips because he's got one of the greenest thumbs I've ever Let's seen. Talk. We're going to learn so much more about him today. We have our shoes off and our soles open. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome to the stage the reggae ambassador of Hawaii, Marty Dredd. Here I am. Am I here? I'm in the building. <laughs> Thanks for that nice build up. Yes. Welcome to Backlit Buddha Studios. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's so happy to have you here. And thank you for creating this format for all of us. I speak on, on behalf of all of my contemporaries. Um, that to have a place to come that's so comfortable and we can talk story and make music, it's really a miracle. No, oh, Especially after the last few years we've had. So mm -hmm. thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. That's actually one of the reasons we created the show was to build the spirits of the fans and the artists because everybody was so stuck inside sure. and we needed to share music again. And now that we're kind of playing out still, I feel like the show needed to keep carrying on. And so it's been a really beautiful talk story, storytelling session. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so Marty has such an eclectic catalog spanning over 28 years this year, correct? Is that wow. when your first is album? is it really? Yeah. Okay. 2022 <laughs> was, yeah, the anniversary of 28 years since your first album came out. Which was Versatile Roots, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to be talking much more about that. And, uh, yeah, let's get this party started, why don't we, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, the sweet sensations of Marty Dread. All right. So I just pick a song and go for it? Whatever you like. All right. This so is your show, baby. The, the pandemic was a, was a particularly productive period for me as a writer. I went through a lot of emotions, as everybody probably did, and I, um, I, I wrote some songs that I probably should have wrote when I was 21. I wrote some songs that I probably should have wrote on my way out of this world. It was just a really, uh, uh, it was a moment in time for me where I really got to dig inside my soul a lot. You were um, vulnerable. and you. I was very vulnerable, and a lot of people were very vulnerable. So um, I'll play you a few songs today from this uh, very productive period during the pandemic when I was just kind of, you know, at home. And the only people that really know these songs are my cat. <laughs> so these are kind of, kind of like <laughs> world premieres, really. Um, I'd like to just thank you for once again for giving me the platform to play a couple of these songs. Because, you know, like I said, the four walls of my house and my cat are the only ones that have ever heard these, these reverberations. So um, the first one I'd like to play is probably the newest thing that I've created. It's called This Ain't the Time. So it's kind of like guy walks into a bar kind of a song. But in this moment, he sits down at the bar and his, his I'm just going to give you a little setup. His, his intention is to just drown his sorrows. He's fresh out of a love and he's not necessarily looking to hook up. He just really just wants to go process this last chapter of his life. Yeah. It's not autobiographical, <laughs> by the way. Um, that's why I said I probably should have wrote it when I was 21. So the guy walks in and, and in comes a girl, beautiful girl. And he's like, man, really right now? Right now? <laughs> so he has to gently sort of like dissuade her and say like th it's the timing is just weird right now. Um, so I'll play you the song. It's called This Ain't the Time. And it, I don't know if I can't really give you a a genre on this yet. It could be somewhere between country and bluegrass and blues. I who knows. But anyway, it's called This Ain't the Time. Sitting at the bar all by myself. I've been staring at that bottle of whiskey on the shelf And then bartender go on and pull it down I need something to turn my night around Then in she came asking my name And are you really in here all alone? She sat down beside me but something inside of me said, boy, you better just go home. Because you know this ain't the time for a new love. I just got through a love that ain't through with me. And my heart is still tied to what I thought was true love. Now I'm here with you, love. I need you to see that this ain't the time She grabbed her drink and just moved on 
And I felt so relieved when she was gone Now I can get back to my drink Without having to get what she thinks Then she returned I guess she felt burned And she felt the need to cuss me out I try to explain I'm only here to drown my pain and There ain't no reason to get mad Your timing is just bad This ain't the time For a new love I just got through a love That ain't through with me My heart is still tied To what I thought was true love Now I'm here with you love And I need you to see that I don't want to give you no false hope So I can't take you home with me tonight I hung myself with my own rope And the only thing that can fix me now is time So this ain't the time for a new love I just got through a love that ain't through with me And my heart is still tied to what I thought was true love Now I'm here with you, love And I need you to see this ain't the time Now this ain't the time Ain't the time. Thank you, guys. Nice. Those are great lyrics. Thank you. That's really great. You feel like you've grown as a songwriter, be, being like, you know, because For you sure. always have such this fun, not childlike, but just like a nice innocence to you. You know, oh, thanks. like you're a strong man, but you you mm. carry a light shoulders. You know, and you I know, love that. I think, Even I th though the world's going through a hard time, you right. always have this light energy, and I appreciate I th that. I think that's because I live here. And I've had many opportunities to live abroad and in, in LA, LA and other places, and I've, I really feel like my demeanor as a human being comes from the nature here and the people that live here. It seems like it attracts a lot of like-minded folk, um, and I just do—I really do. You, you hit on something very important. I do try to keep it light because I learned a long time ago that when people go to a show, they're already dealing with their life, their bills, their stress, their relationship breakups, whatever. For me to go to a show and just tell them, here's, some, here's all my troubles. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, I'm here to have fun. I want to dance. Release. Especially now. And I feel like this might be a, a strange, pivotal moment for my genre, which is predominantly a reggae genre. Typically, reggae music has been a music that taught lessons of history. You know, it talked about social unrest. Mm -hmm. It talked about justice. It talked about... It's a pretty piece of history. Yeah, and, and things you might not necessarily learn in school. You know, certain martyrs and people that were of this world that never really made it into our history books. But I feel like that message, and it's, it's, it's kind of like an overtone of, not, I don't want to say a, like, a, like a Mr. Know-it-all vibe, but it's like, it's trying to teach you something. But now, after the pandemic, everyone just wants to get out and party. Yeah. So I'm feeling like there might be a weird shift because people are just going to want to hear all the major key songs and like, let's get out and dance. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how reggae music redefines itself because it's always been a very message laden music mm -hmm. um, and I think it will never s not be that but I think the crowd is changing and the mindset of the people is is going to affect that a bit absolutely yeah. especially it, when it comes to the reggae scene especially out here in Hawaii it's it's eclectic some people are very focused on that Jawaiian the melding of mm -hmm. the sound or some people they stick to the old the reggae, the gladiators, yeah, the, the classics, classics. But mm -hmm. you're you have developed your own kind of story and sound. I mean, when you have a career that spans almost three decades, you kind of develop this own. You're you're like a being, you know. It's like hmm. when people talk about Marty Dread, their face lights up. So you're doing Ooh, something well, right nice to <laughs> in your journey. You know, like everybody nice immediately lights up. And so thank you for that. And thank you for sure. making Maui home hey. because I know how it is to go to LA and then they take pieces of you. And it's just nice that we've been able to have all of you all these well, years. Oh man, you know, th there's every town has a good and a bad. And, and I feel like the all the time I've spent in, I don't want to say Hollywood, but in LA, 
I, fi I find like the search is so much more, uh, you have to really work hard to find the soul of that town. It's there. Yeah. It's definitely there. There's a lot of wonderful creatives there. But it's very also very surface and very shallow in some instances. And so it, I find myself pulling away from those environments and just kind of like, I would like to be in places where I can just go down into a gully, slip down to the gully and not see anybody all day. Yeah. I like that part <laughs> of life. <laughs> and also you want to be able to share your art in a genuine, authentic fo uh, way. And I yeah. think Hawaii lets you do that. It truly does. But there is an also a drawback of being in Hawaii, which is promoters don't necessarily want to fly my band to New York or to London, you know. I usually find myself leaving my band behind and going as a solo, and I gotta pick up a band there, mm -hmm. which is never the same. I don't want to be the Chuck Berry of reggae, you know what I mean? <laughs> I want I want to be able to take my <laughs> my my guys. That's so how your sound. So that's yeah, sound. they're my sound exactly, yeah. and and a lot of the guys that I've worked with over the last decade or so too, uh, we're very loyal to each other as far as the kind of music we make. And so I guess this is my little public apology to them because <laughs> a lot of times the promoters don't want to foot the it's bill hard. to fly eight people from Hawaii. It's hard. And you have a whole band. Another thing that I've always insisted on is flying our own engineer. And that's just another expense for a lot of people. They're like, we got engineers here. But yeah, but you don't know my band's sound, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so yeah, so there's always that. Well, what do you got up for us next? Uh, I want to play a song about Willie Kay. Oh, wonderful. How lovely. Um, some people out there and viewers, you know, probably knew him from going to Hoppers and all the places that he played throughout the years. And he was such a pivotal part of our music scene. He really was a monster. And, you know, he could play in Carnegie Hall just as well as he could play at Hoppers, you know. Uh, okay. Hoppers, by the way, if you don't know, was a nightclub in Kihei. And he, that was one of his main joints that he played all the time. But I feel like we lost something um, very monumental when he left this earth. And his, his, um, mark that he left on the world. Um, I think it'll become clear as the, as the years pass by. Um, I've always wanted to, I mean, I haven't approached a family or anything like that, but I think it would be cool to make a record where you take a Mike Love, a Paula Fuga, an Anohea, you know, a Marty Tread, and you make a record of all local artists doing Willie K songs. That's such a great idea. You know, because he, he is worthy. Let's make that happen. He's worthy, <laughs> you know. So of anyway, I, I wrote this song about him a long time ago. It's about him. Um, and the story talks about an ukulele that was given to him by his grandpa. And it kind of spawns him to be the Willie K that we came to know. But that ukulele travels from the first verse. He's a little boy and he's gifted this instrument. And then he's in high school and everyone's like, wow, this guy's really talented. And then it ends, like every song should have a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. It ends where he's transitioning out of this world, and he wants to take that instrument with him into the grave. But the message of the song is, let's pass it on to another of your bloodline so that the songs live on through that instrument. It's kind of like that, that movie, The Red Violin. Did you ever see that film? Yes. Like the, the violin goes through all these different hands, right? So this is called Mr. Mele. And for those of you that are tuning in on the web that may not be from Hawaii, don't know that mele means music or song. So, and, and I really thought Willie Kay was, you know, a song embodied. He really was. He had, he had, um, I'm not going to be super long winded about this, but I've never been able to express how I felt about losing this guy. I mean, he was the kind of the guy that like, you could put 20 A listers in a room, the Steven Tyler's and like all these guys, and he would be the guy on stage putting it all together, going, okay, this guy's going to sing this song. <laughs> he was just such a, a coagulant for the music scene here. And um, I've known him since I was a little boy. And a lot of people have always had some fairly dark things to say about his personality and the things that he might have said or done over the years. But he was always really, uh, like, almost like otherworldly sweet to me. And I can't really, I don't know why. He always like, kind of chose me. I remember when I was about 18 years old and I was leaving for the Soviet Union um, before I c became a musician, I saw him play at Lahaina Civic Center, this big concert. He was like the headliner, you know. He had a band called The Buggers. <laughs> and he, he sees me in the audience. I used to wear my little reggae cap, you know. I was like the, back then, I was like the only reggae kid <laughs> in school. <laughs> and he brings me on stage. He goes, this kid is the only kid I would let play my guitar. And I didn't even know how to play guitar. <laughs> I was like, me? Now? Like in front of this audience, you know? So, um, but it touched me. Like it really made me want to follow that particular path. So. It's called Mr. Mele, and this is a, a pretty much a world premiere, too, because nobody knows this song. I've been kind of sitting on it for a while and find, trying to find the right time to, to, to and the right 
situation to play it. So, uh, Mr. Melee. Grandpa gave him that ukulele when he was eight years old And he gladly takes it everywhere he goes Strumming and playing melody so sweet And when you hear him play, memories come running back to me So play on, Mr. Mele, music is your name like the fires of Pele that cannot be tamed And when we hear those songs, tears come falling down like rain Cause without you and that little you, this world is not the same In high school the halls were filled with your Hawaiian sound as you strummed on that kamaka, crowds would gather round, grateful for the chance to hear your golden voice so strong. And as you would play, we would sing along. Play on, Mr. Mele, music is your name, like the fires of Pele that cannot be tamed. And when we hear those songs, tears come falling down like rain. Cause without you and that little uke, this world is not the same. Now gray hairs are coming, you've changed a thousand strings. You look back reflecting on the joy the music brings You say that when you die, that uke must go with you But I'm sure somebody's grandson could carry on the tunes Play on, Mr. Mele, music is your name Like the fires of Pele, that cannot be tamed when we hear those songs, tears come falling down like rain. Cause without you and that little you, this world is not the same. We miss you, Willie Kay. It's out there. I know. <laughs> My Willie K song. How beautiful that we have this on yeah. Manao at home. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. You're so welcome. Definitely chicken skin. I'm I'm very lucky. I had good experiences with Willie K. Yeah. Because um, sharing that Mulligan stage, I would have to wait for him and his show. And you don't right. ever. <laughs> Willie K gets off stage when you when he won. <laughs> but trivia night you starts at 10, but it never started at 10. <laughs> and you know what? It truly humbled me. It was one of my first gigs in Maui, like 2008. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, I mean, me bubbly. I didn't. Everyone was so afraid of him. I just ran up and gave him a hug. No, he was he, a teddy bear. He was a big teddy well, you gotta bear. You got to get inside yeah. that. Never get a job. He was a pineapple. Yeah. And remember, I got to wear his pineapple suit once promoting with Brian Cohn at First Friday. And he saw me and he went, <laughs> like, cause oh, I can't funny. believe you fit in that pineapple suit. I'm like, I had to bring it in a little. But <laughs> that's really funny. He was a great personality and bless his family and all they're doing. And I know another true, artist true. that you're close to that was very close to him is Gretchen Rhodes. Yeah, oh yeah, she was very close very to him. close to him. Said ex almost the exact same thing you did. Just really always nothing but kindness. And I'm, not, I'm so thrilled to see you and Gretchen out and about lately. Yeah, what's that been like? House Shakers. Tell me a little bit about this well, new gig. I got one show that was interested in uh, me not doing reggae, but doing more like rock and blues and like stadium rock tunes. So I approached Gretchen and I said, okay. "What do you think about doing a duet show with me?" And she's like, "Let's rock." Yeah. And so she introduced me to the band. I've known all those guys over the years individually, Lenny, Lenny Paul Marchetti, mm -hmm. the Machete. And then just it just became such a synergy when we would get together and 
she's such a powerhouse and I'm you know an entertainer that's what I really am at my core Absolutely. when I get on a stage I am like engage this audience from the first song right and so together we just have like a really magic synergy I and agree. she's such a riot she's so, she so funny cool? and 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 mad mad talented right <laughs> so it just it we've done a bunch of shows now together we played the color fest and we've done a, a lot of private stuff we've played Dolly's grand opening yeah. in Paia yes and just <laughs> murdered it it, it was, was so much like lines down the street yeah, I live really in Paia and I was just gonna tell you I heard you resonating through oh, really? the neighborhood because I live down the street p p uh, by old Charlie's so oh, nice one. I was outside I'm like that's that's Marty and Rick Gretchen yeah like, yeah in the, in so the it's, neighborhood. It's, it's been really fun working with them now their last oh, we were talking you mentioned it slightly but I want to talk about a little bit more there was some point, which is really interesting what's going on in the world now, that you were chosen as an ambassador for Hawaii and went to Moscow and painted a mural. And, mm -hmm. and like your other life, you were a watercolorist. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, your when first I was love. in high school, yeah. before I even thought of being a musician, I used to, suppose my mother was a watercolor artist, and she used to uh, paint in Greenwich Village in New York. And I would see her paintings around the house and it inspired me to pick up but I wanted to paint whales and I wanted to paint the level of the water and you'd see what was happening under the water and you'd see what was happening on top of the water. You know, you'd see the island and like a bird flying by. But underneath you saw the whale and its baby and maybe a turtle. Okay. So I started painting like that when I was about 16 or 17. And when I was a senior in high school, into Maui High by the way, there was a call for needing artists to go to the Soviet Union to paint the Maui to Moscow mural. And what that was was the leaders of the world, keeping the, the time frame in mind, this is 1987, it was like still Cold the Cold War. War was still fully in full effect. So the leaders apparently weren't really making any headway into peaceful negotiations between our two countries. And you couldn't just go to Russia and just hang out in the home of a Soviet student. You know, it was very locked off. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, let's send some kids in there. And the kids can do it. Once they start becoming pen pals and friends, then they will become, when they inherit the mantle of power somewhere down the road, they'll already know a little bit about each other, you know, because there was this, this like, view that the Soviet people, when they looked upon the Americans, they looked at us of like, this, this, you're so decadent, the West, you know, they're so <laughs> wasteful, and, you know, it's like we looked at them as communists and they looked at us as capitalists. But underneath it all, we were just all kids that wanted to be friends. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, uh, first of all, I was chosen on the merit of a, a watercolor painting I did. And I went there. I tell this story a lot. If you look at interviews of Marty really? Dre, you <laughs> might hear this nine or ten times from looking at my past interviews. But I, um, we got to Soviet Union. We raised all our own funds. We did fundraisers all around Maui. And we almost didn't go. And we were like eight grand short at the very end. And Yoko Ono was visiting an art gallery in Lahaina on Front <laughs> Street, heard what we were doing. And she's all about peace, you know, right? give peace a chance and all that. She just wrote us a check. You kids want to go to Russia to, oh. to make friends and to like <laughs> create world peace? Boom, she just writes us a check. <laughs> That's extraordinary. So, and I've never publicly thanked her either. Thank because you, Yoko. She, if she's she, watching uh, right she, now. Um, really, she was probably was the difference between us, us going. And it literally, this the, in the way that this trip changed my life is um, we walk into this gymnasium after we get all together and we get there. And there's a whole bunch of kids in there could be upwards of 800 or 1,000 kids. And the announcer comes on and says, these kids came all the way from Hawaii to be your friends and your pen pals. Then no one said a <laughs> word. <laughs> like They were like, we don't want to know them. So uh, I look backstage, and I see a guitar real similar to that Grimes guitar I was holding earlier, just a brown acoustic guitar. And I went and picked it up, and I knew these chords. <laughs> what song is this? La, 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 la. <laughs> Twist and shout. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I, I proceeded to just play that song on the microphone. I just got up to the microphone and I played it. By the time I was done with that song, all the kids came out of the bleachers. They were on the gymnasium floor dancing, pulling us on the dance floor. This song, literally wow. every language barrier, political barrier, every nervous tension anyone had in that room was all absolved. And it was just kids having fun. And in this moment, I knew I was going to be a musician, not a painter. I, I watched this thing transform this room, this one song. I found out many years later that the Beatles catalog was completely locked off from the Soviet citizens. They could, it was illegal to own Beatles records. What? Back in those, yeah, before Glasnost, which is the, Perestroika was like the process of, of the Soviet Union opening to the West. Mm -hmm. Before that, 
the Beatles were seen as a threat to the establishment <laughs> of the Soviet Union. They really were. Because, you know, they symbolized freedom and they talked about Letting go, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Girls. I found out that the song Twist and Shout was number one during it's that trip in 1987, the 30 years after it came out. I had no idea. I just played the oh, song. And it was like, hey, he's playing the hit like, song of the day. <laughs> like, that's the <laughs> oldest song in the world. Anyways, um, that song just changed my whole life. And I never, I, honestly, this is a shame to say I haven't painted since that day. I wow. should probably pick up a paintbrush. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe full circle one day when you're getting older, you'll be like, yeah, and then you'll start painting yeah, again. Yeah, I, I want to put a footnote on that story, though, because it's very critical, because I mentioned that my mom kind of inspired me to become a watercolor artist. Um, and I told you I used to like to paint whales, humpback whales in particular, because that's what we have out here. Um, when I was submitting poems and paintings to become one of those youth ambassadors, I submitted this photo of a whale and its baby and it was that painting was chosen uh, for an art competition from Oahu and from Sea Life Park yeah. and I, I was going to go to Sea Life Park to receive my award. I had never left Maui since I was eight. Now I'm 18. I'm like wow I'm going to get to go to Honolulu. It's like a big trip for me. <laughs> so um, the night before I leave to go to Honolulu my mom sits me down and she says there's something I have to tell you. Your father's people, my dad's from Worcester, Massachusetts. Your father's people were whalers. They harvested whales for oil before the oil industry happened. And you should know that, that you're, you come from the stock of like four generations of whalers. Wow. And it just rocked me. I was like, I can't go up accept this award. What if people find that out? I'd be the biggest hypocrite up there, right? <laughs> so it just completely, it killed something in me about painting whales. It just like, it froze me in that moment. But full circle, Fast forward 30, 40 years, I spent the last 10 years singing on a boat for humpback whales every week. <laughs> so I, I, it's, it's You gave back how that some love. I gave them. back, <laughs> right. So my parents killed, my forebearers killed whales for, for decades. Mm -hmm. And now I get out there and sing for whales and make them happy and dance around. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> Isn't that a cool full that circle is story? That's such a cool story. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, what is it like playing on a sh moving ship? Like, do you, do you like, it's like love? you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, eh. the whales are such bad. No. I remember any visitor to the island that I knew that became like a to do. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, yeah, we're going to dinner at Nick's Fish Market and then we're going to go on the island's cruise. Yeah. And it's like, it used to become part of the. You know, it, it became synonymous with me also. Mm -hmm. It was like, they didn't even call it the Island Rhythms Cruise. It was they just Marty, it the Marty Dread. Cruise. Yep. Right. But it, just picture this if you've, if you've never been on it, there's, Music, like danceable music, cocktails, food, amazing vistas, sunsets, whales jumping, dolphins, birds flying by. I mean, it's r I mean, you look out at the ocean in Maui, you're already bedazzled, right? Every you throw night. in some whales and some cocktails oh, wow. <laughs> and some reggae music, everyone's <laughs> dancing. That's why it was so popular, because it had everything. Yeah. It had all the right elements. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you for elevating that. Sure. It was so I can't wait to hear what you're going to play next. Best 10 years still, of my life. I still have Chicken Skin from that Willie K song. Oh, thank you. That's I'm really beautiful. I'm glad I chose that one today. And guys, don't forget, this is a gig technically for our lovely friend Marty Dredd. So if you see right there his Venmo, martin hennessy 3 hey. Tip the talents. Give him a little monetary aloha, as we like to call it. And thank you so much, before I forget, to our supporters. That is, of course, The Playground Maui, Maui's live entertainment venue, and also Venture Physical Therapy, a small family business that's doing big things on Maui. We really appreciate you guys for tuning in every week. Without further ado, let's hang out some more with Marty Dre. All right. Is it okay if I play a cover song? You can play whatever you want. The reason I ask that is because um, I find this song's backstory so cool. And I, I wanted to bring it to your, your attention, really. But and, and for the for your listeners, I'm not one and everyone online to to know the backstory of this song. It comes from the country and western genre. It was written by George Jones. They called him the possum. Very, very, very famous songwriter, singer songwriter in the country music um, genre. So in 1999, it was his last album he'd done. He, I don't even, know, I get choked up thinking about this story. Somehow the, he was invited to the CMAs, which is the Country Music Awards show, the big televised broadcast, right? And they asked him if he would do a very, very condensed version of his song, because in 1999, the song was voted for Country Song of the Year, but they wanted him to do like a 
30 second version of it. He's like, I'll just stay home. Yeah. So he decided to, to just not do it. And then, and then Alan Jackson gets on stage. He's also up for song of the year, plays his song of the year that I think he won actually that year. And he stops right in the middle of the song and he just plays the, the George Jones songs. I was, I was, and it, it freaked everybody out because it was a very rock and roll, like a rebel thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't do that. You don't play your song. You're not, you, yeah, you're not well celebrating you, someone else. Those, those shows are all scripted. Avoid. You do this song now, and then Reba McIntyre comes on after you, and she's got these three minutes. You know, it's, it's very scripted. So he literally, sh he made a huge statement by honoring George Jones, because George Jones was, he's an icon. Mm -hmm. he's, 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 he's the equivalent of like what Willie Kay is to our island. Mm -hmm. George Jones is a massive icon. Huge. But the song, the George Jones song, is called Choices, and it was his, it was like his transitional song out of this world. It was very autobiographical. The things that he did in his life, he put every emotion into this song. So this is the song I choose to play. It's called Choices. There were choices Since the day that I was born There were voices That told me right from wrong And if I'd listened No, I wouldn't be here today Living and dying With the choices I've made I was tempted from an early age I found I like drinking And I never turned one down And there were loved ones And I chased them all away Now I'm living and dying With the choices I've made There were choices since the day that I was born, there were voices that told me right from wrong. If I'd listened, no, I wouldn't be here today, living and dying with the choices I've made. I was tempted. From an early age I found I like women And I never turned one down There were loved ones Somehow I chased them all away Now I'm living and dying With the choices I've made There were choices since the day that I was born, there were voices that told me right from wrong. If I'd listened, no, I wouldn't be here today, living and dying with the choices I've made. Living and dying with the choices I've made. Now I'm living and dying. With the choices I've made. <laughs> George Jones. Oh, good old George. I used to love that song. Um, you have another question? So I just go ahead with another song. Oh, I get, oh we're going to keep talking, baby. Okay. I got <laughs> just at my first rodeo. I wanted to talk a little bit about, it's really beautiful because um, I think when it comes to like a career in the arts, like we were just talking about LA, a lot of people will go out and try to find something or grasp it, but you've done such a beautiful job of, sorry, of, of, of being able to make your dreams come true from Maui. I'm having a little technical difficulty. Go ahead. So Marty is able to share the Aloha with the world, share all your live music, but also call Maui home. You know, I mean, that's what I think. I I like to share that with a lot of artists that I see try to go out there and um, it's it's you can do it all. You can have it all. Whatever you think is beautiful and your success, I just how I I don't know. I think you're just such a great example of what it is to be able to 
go out into the world, but also understand where you come from and stay here. Like you said, this makes you happy to live here. It truly does. And yeah. that's so cool. But you've played everywhere from the White House to like Reggae on the Rocks, Reggae on the River, to anywhere like the Cotton Club in Harlem. I mean, that's what was, the, I mean, that has to be fascinating. When it comes to <laughs> traveling, when you come home, it, it, do you feel like this is just where you belong? It always felt like that? 100%. I, sometimes I literally physically kiss the ground. Because I leave for months at a time, you know? Can I switch this to a different instrument? Yeah, go ahead. You got a better one off the wall? Well, any one will work. It's got strings on it. Because um, you become kind of a piece of the fabric when it comes to the music scene here. You're, you're, every time anyone talks about you, it's... And that's another thing, like, you have beautiful family, friends, you were able to make it part of your life here. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm listening to you. And, and I just think... I don't know. I just. I guess I want to give you some accolades. I just think it's really beautiful that you're able to live your life like that and Thank still you. make music and still want to get out there and play by yourself or play with a full band. And what's uh -huh. some advice you can give to like maybe somebody who's early coming up in the arts and they're kind of struggling? What to what that word success always it always bothers me with these artists. It's right. like you get to define what your path is in your journey. I think with me, you'll find that success is being here and being happy. <laughs> Uh, with the choices that I make, not to pun that last song, but I've turned down big tours. I've turned down a lot of things that I just didn't feel right for me. You know, even certain shows, I'm like, mm, I don't think that's like where I want to be today. Mm -hmm. To be able to to make those choices actually has a lot to do with your support system. And I f I feel like when I was younger, when I was in my 20s and stuff, I had to go out and gig because that's how I paid my rent. That's how I did everything. You know, I supported my kids through my gigs. And, you know, as I've grown, I've figured out diversified ways to support myself. So I don't have to play nine shows from Detroit to Chicago just to make the budget of that little tour meet. I can turn some of them down. I can say, you know, I only want to work two nights and then take a three-day break and then do the last two. If you can afford to make those kinds of choices, most musicians cannot. Mm -hmm. They go, you're assigned to a record label, <laughs> and you go where they tell you to ten go. Ten nights, ten You got to promote yeah. this record. Being an independent record label owner, I mean, I have 21 records on my own label. I don't sell a lot of records, but I know which records I sell. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I also dictate where I go tour. If I say, oh, I got a song that's kind of charting in Amsterdam, I charge Amsterdam, you know? Yeah. <coughs> but I, I think the, the rallying back to what I said was that your support system, too. Like, my family was always really supportive of me as a musician. Even That's though so nice, in the beginning it? The, it, was, yeah. it wasn't necessarily lucrative, but they could see my conviction in it all and that I re this is what I really wanted to do. And sometimes they would let me stay for a year without paying rent or they would, you know, they would help me fix my car if, if gigs weren't going well or, you know, because I always had some slump years. Like 2008 was a gnarly one where all the gigs just kind of went away when the um, stock market crashed yeah. or whatever. Having that support system is, has, has been crucial for me. So for a young musician, I would say build your team. The te your team is really important. 100%. People think they can get out there and do this by themselves, but it really takes a team of people that, can, that, can, uh, that you can share your vision with that can help you to a obtain that exactly and i feel like sometimes with the vision it gets lost when you try to hire people to make you bigger or more yeah. popular it's like you know your art is kind of getting chip chopped away a little bit and you know you really just want to share there's you there's <laughs> always 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 a compromise the more people you add to the ticket something gets chipped away <laughs> yes <right. laughs> you know? exactly. it's just the way it is <laughs> yeah and you know what to be honest, being a music journalist for so long, some of my favorite shows are the intimate ones. Uh -huh. The intimate ones with um, under 100 people, 50 people, 30 people. Those are some of my most memorable nights. And then, of course, you'll go to a huge stadium and you feel that energy. And But you take something different away from that small room and something like this where we just get to kind of talk yeah. story and share yeah. a little bit more instead of you just being a talking, you know, yeah, a, a singing head. head in the corner <laughs> for some ambiance. Right. <laughs> Marty's not ambiance, all right? He's the full package. But I, I feel <laughs> like with, with um, uh, not to cut you off, but no, you're good. if I were to give advice to a young person that wanted to get into this industry, I would say don't follow what you see on your social media as success. What, what, what is portrayed as success is millions of records sold, you know, winning awards and accolades. That's success to the record label because they literally own you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you 
are a musician that makes songs to make songs and to like to beautify this world with music it's different than oh i won a grammy or you know i got to play with rihanna or whatever that's success to the record label because when you stream like in the streaming era you have to stream millions of times to make thousands of dollars which is ridiculous yeah. it's like blatantly you're getting raped by these companies and i have like i have five records in the can right now that i've refused to release because i'm like do i just put them out and then they're just out there in the stratosphere and i'll never recoup on them because it's to the point where people don't have to buy anything they just stream, stream it, it listen Google to it or whatever it or right so it's not it's not designed for the for the musician to succeed not right now it's mm -hmm. designed for the big company that can exploit you if they go wow he's young he looks good he writes good songs let's sign him he's a commodity. put him on the road make a bunch of money off of him until he burns out and a lot of these young people do they don't know how to manage it all or they wild out or they so, so that's money why i'm in. saying surrounding yourself with a team that that's you can trust advice. and that that makes you feel grounded and calls you on your stuff yes. i was gonna say s-i-s-i-t but this is tv yeah. <laughs> so um you you have to that's great. people have to be honest with you and i feel like a lot of these celebrities that are showing out they don't have people around them that are mm -hmm. will be blatantly honest with them mm -hmm. you know they, they they're just yes men to them because mm -hmm. they're all on the teeth they're all making money off mm -hmm. these guys and the longevity of their career is not as much as it would be for like somebody who really took you know the time to be with their fans be authentic to their sound and right. work independently, which is something yeah. you've, and also what I love about you too is, I was looking at your catalog, that's one of my favorite things about Hawaii is that you guys all are on each other's albums or you co-write a song yeah. or you, you know, just Beautiful. looking over, it's so great, like, you know, and, if and then other people, then you get to work with someone like Jack Johnson, Ben Harper, Willie, mm -hmm. of course, you know, Lucas Nelson and all them, you've grow you've seen them grow and how Truly. exciting. And, and I just think it's really cool that you guys are all and like I love that you were on um, Cindy Paulus. Oh, I'd love to talk about that too. I had no idea that you were an OG Kaoi radio DJ. Oh my God, that's you, where I started my career. I just found that out from really? Cindy, wow. and I thought that makes so much sense. Of course, no wonder you're so magnanimous. Well, just that's like, why I, I f that's where I figured the, out the love yeah. of songs. Like oh, I would be getting them? all these records from the, and I was the guy who had to scan through ten songs to find the one song that we would play on the air. So I got really good at picking songs, mm -hmm. and that really that really helped my music career because like, you can tell when a song's kind of like, mm, that's just an okay one. That's yeah. the one, you know. How y you're not always right, but there there it becomes an art form mm -hmm. to scan records and go, that's the hit right there. And I'm almost never wrong when it mm -hmm. comes to when I was in radio. Oh, like when that John Legend came out, and I'm like, all of me is the hit. It's the only ballad, but listen to this song. Like you just yeah. know before anyone else declares it a hit you can catch those you got little it. things mm -hmm. and that's what those days in radio taught me well i'm great you're so yeah. well-rounded this is such a great interview guys thanks so much for tuning in we have more here from marty dread what do you right. got for us tonight oh by the way we're holding a grimes guitar which we'll talk about afterwards. i am indeed this is a very very uh vintage grimes guitar too <laughs> um one of his first um so let's see how it sounds though <laughs> thank you cody for your sonic steve, assistance steve grimes if you're out there somewhere this came to be on this broadcast by default. The other Yamaha I was playing somehow stopped working in the middle of the broadcast. <laughs> and um, I'm actually borrowing this from my friend Tracy Stice, who lives right next to me. This was in his closet for many years. And he said, you know, I've got an old Grimes guitar in the closet. And I go, you're kidding. Me. Yeah, we'll take Get it out. Get that thing out. <laughs> so I immediately took the luthier, changed out the strings, and resurfaced it. And so it's, it's, Very cool. it's you know, one of those gifts that just sort of fell out into my lap so i'd like to play a song um i think this is going to show a little bit of vulnerability <laughs> on my end but um i want to set this up a little bit i feel like in life you only get a couple of chances at love like i mean the real love like the one you kind of go ooh, the one that got away you know and i'm 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 known for like when i write songs it's usually they're happy they're like happy love songs like we're in love, we're dancing, Sunshine, I met you at the e Right, right, right. <laughs> it's it's a bit light, you know? But this is a really, uh, one of the heavier emotions that I've ever tried to document in song. Um, I was with who I thought, I mean, I still think this, is like 20 years on, that who the person I probably loved the most out of everyone I've ever met in my life. This person was as close to my heart as anybody could ever get. And, um, 
she had what you call an ectopic pregnancy where the baby starts to form inside the fallopian tube mm -hmm. and she had to have an operation to get it removed because that can be life-threatening if not addressed and what happened was the doctor that went to they first they poke a little camera in the tube to make sure that's exactly what's going on but when that doctor did that he poked a little bit too far and he ruptured her spleen or one of her organs and she was bleeding this fluid inside and didn't know and she started turning yellow and anyway we were going through all of this as a couple and we I moved to Oahu because she was uh, at Queens oh Medical cool. Center so it was a really long so she was a bikini model by trade and she got cut open from her whole sternum right up the middle so it literally ended her whole, her whole career but I, I feel like I'm um, this is really hard for me to say and, and I, I doubt I probably would have said this if I thought about it twice but I feel like I left her at the time when I shouldn't have left. She was going through a lot and she literally pushed me away, but you, you don't always leave when someone pushes you away. Sometimes that's saying, you know, like hold me tighter, but sh she pushed and pushed me away because, you know, I probably said and did some things that weren't right. I'm human, but I should have held on tighter, you know, and I didn't, and I regret it. This is one of the one things in my life that I look back and I go, boy, had I played my cards different, I'd probably be married and living somewhere happily with this person. It just didn't work out that way. But I feel like that happening to her, where it ended her career and stuff, it, um, it left a physical scar on her, but it also left an emotional scar because the relationship ended at the same time that her whole career ended, you know? Um, so I, I've struggled with writing a song about it for years, and I finally came up with one about five years ago. And I never play it for anybody. I'm like, my kids, nobody knows this song. It's just called My Sparkling Diamond. Um, and I guess I, somewhere deep inside of me, I think this is a, an apology to her. And it's an apology to myself. To like Forgiving yourself is one of the hardest yeah. things one can do, you know? Because I really feel like I walked out in the uh, ultimate wrong time. So it's an apology to her, too. But it's, 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 it's also my way of trying to forgive myself for that moment. So... It's called My Sparkling Diamond. Let's see if, if this uh, Grimes guitar will, will assist me on this. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. If you give me two seconds, I might be able to try it again, but. Let me try again. Music is so like, like that, you know. It takes you there, man. It takes you right at that moment. No worries. Watch out, Chris comes back. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. <sighs> Something happened to me when I saw your picture today. Thought I'd buried your memory down deep inside. But it all came back to me when I stepped off my plane I felt a wave of shame I could not hide My sparkling diamond mm -hmm. But I forgot to polish mm -hmm. It's amazing you forgave me mm -hmm. Cause I left you when things got the hardest I can't believe that I left you all alone Now I feel ashamed I don't know how you made it on your own And you got through all that pain I came back to say I'm sorry For all the things I've done I came back to say I'm sorry 
but you were gone. They say that time's a healer, I started to believe. For loving me, you had paid the highest cost. Then I heard that you remarried and you both moved on. In the end, I guess it was only me who lost my sparkling diamond mm -hmm. that I forgot to polish. Mm -hmm. It's amazing you forgave me. I left you when things were the hardest I can't believe that I left you all alone And now I feel ashamed I don't know how you made it on your own And you got through all the pain I came back to say I'm sorry For all the things I've done I came back to say I'm sorry you were gone You forgave me though I left you Like a bottle on the shelf To this day I know you still bear the scars So how can I get past my demons And forgive myself Knowing that I took a twinkle from a star My sparkling diamond Mm, it's amazing you forgave me Because mm. I left you when things were the hardest I can't believe that I left you all alone And I got through all the pain I don't know how you made it on your own Got through all that shame I came back to say I'm sorry For everything I'd done I came back to say I'm sorry But you were gone You were Right? I did it. You did it. Did and that is a really beautiful song. You got me good, dude. <laughs> I'm over here like, ah, ah, hold it in, Trish. You're live. You can't be balling on TV now. <laughs> that was yeah. really special. And Thanks for letting how me share therapeutic that. to get these songs out. Really and truly. In the last 10 years. And is it, it's, a, it's like you've grown and you matured and then all these emotions are... And, and it's a beautiful song. That's Thank a you. beautiful song. Thank you. And so the much. Willie Kay song is fantastic. Wow. I mean, these Thanks. are... Um, your last album that came out last year, Treasure Box. Mm -hmm. What a great name of hits. Thanks. And what a beautiful experience for you. I was astounded to see you worked with Errol Brown. Yeah, Errol Brown. Who is Bob Marley's former... Uh, yeah, he did Bob Marley's last three albums. Wow. Yeah. How did that come up? How do you get in contact with somebody? I've been working with Jamaican music musicians and engineers for years, like mm -hmm. since the nineties. But um Errol and I just became we have like a like a father and son kind of a relationship, you know. We we talk almost every day. Really? And, That's uh, yeah, wonderful. We, we really have a, a great relationship. And you lost your father right as a youth. Yeah, I lost him when I was eight. When the reason eight? I came to Hawaii is because my father passed away. Okay. And my mom just took me and my three siblings and said, We're moving to Hawaii. <laughs> Good lady. Get away from New I York. I like this right? lady. <laughs> but that, that record, actually, um, it's funny how all of this spins back to my mom and dad. It's so strange. All of the music that I play, that I like, that I admire, it comes back to my mom and dad because they showed me. They didn't force anything down my throat, but they showed me what they liked. Um, my mom and dad had a vinyl collection when I was a kid. Heck yeah. Know? And I'm talking Harry Chapin, Stephen Stills, you know, all the, the good oldies, right? And for that record, Treasure Box of Hits, what I told Errol what I wanted to do was I wanted to take, like, hand pick all my favorite songs that I remember as a child and make island reggae versions of them. What 
And he was like, we need to go to Jamaica to do it. And I go, let's go. Let's go. So we did that. And, and, and it really, it, it's... No problem. It's a lot of my fans' favorite record of mine because it's... I put a lot of... Uh, because of the memories are str so strong, I put a lot of emphasis on the way they come across. There's mm -hmm. a couple of those songs. I mean, Cats in the Cradle is like, you know, who doesn't think about their dad when that song comes Shoes, on, right? right? Harry Belfonte? Harry Chapin. Harry Chapin, sorry, yeah, not Belfonte, yeah. sorry. Chapin. So let me tell you some of the songs that are on that record. Um, still the One by Orleans. Still, still the One that still makes me smile. And then there's um, Love the One You're With. Um, mm -hmm. Stephen Steele's. Love the one you with. What a great. Yeah. Rainy night on that one. Love a rainy night. Yeah. Eddie Rabbit. Love a rainy night. And um, Walking in Memphis by Mark Cohn. Um, Classic. That makes me think about my dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just kind of like songs like that where everyone knows the chorus. There's a Christopher Cross song on there. Oh, cool. Uh, what's that one? And I will never be the same without your me. love. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so they're all songs that I grew up on that I, no one's ever. You're like a and I box. trust me, I'm a radio <laughs> disc jockey for 27 years. I know there were no reggae versions of Cats in the Cradle. No, there. <laughs> and there were no reggae versions of Love the One You're With. And there were no reggae versions of the Christopher Cross song. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research. I started with about 100 songs that I just handpicked from my mom and dad's vinyl collection. And I got that somehow down to 12. And yeah. those are the 12 I went to Jamaica with. And none of these songs are easy songs. Mm -hmm. Reggae is known for kind of like, you know, just <laughs> two chords. You just chunk it along. These songs have I real arrangements. Yeah. <laughs> these, these songs have bridges and, you know, sometimes even signature time changes and things. So taking these songs to session musicians, Jamaican session musicians, was, was challenging for them. I bet. But they had so much fun. By the end of the project, all of them were totally in love with the project. And I worked with, <coughs> excuse me, I worked with some really, really noteworthy people. I worked with Fully Fullwood, uh, did some producing, most of the producing of the record. He's a bass player that played with Bob Marley. He played with Peter Tosh. He's played with, a, like, who's who. And then I, I worked with um, Phil Chen. He was a li lifetime bass player with Rod Stewart, Chinese Jamaican fellow. Uh, he played on wow. all the big Rod Stewart hits, like, if you think I'm sexy, all those oh, hits. Nice. He played all those Maggie. tunes. Yeah, all of them. And then I worked with Tony Chin. He's a you know, master rhythm guitar player from Jamaica. Um, Pam Hall sang a lot of the harmony. And then Leroy Osborne came to the sessions. He sings first harmony with Sade. Have you ever oh, wow. seen a Sade video? He's the guy that sings first harmony with her. Ooh. He just heard what we're doing. He was like, you know, I'll be involved, sure. How cool. And he sang <laughs> like <laughs> magnificent. Yeah, <come> <laughs> he sang magnificent harmony in all of this stuff. If you hear the harmonies wow. on that record, you go, wow. You've had really quite good. an extraordinary journey, and it's still going. Yeah. You still, you have, I've, lately I've just been seeing this new breath in you and this energy around <laughs> town when you're live. Hey, what's up? Yeah. I never go live until recently. Until recently. I I've, it's been so live. nice to see you out yeah. and about. Yeah, and thank you. I know your fans, like, right for a moment, let's go back to your fans. You have some of the most loyal, loving fans of any musician I've ever seen. I must have, I concur. They absolutely <laughs> fall, I mean... The, like I was saying, my neighbor used to give me your CDs, and I'm like, I have them. <laughs> like, I, I got have, these already. I got these. She's like, no, you got to listen to this. And just you became part. And everybody's, you know, in, in your CD player that you were part of the mix here. Mm -hmm. You're just part of it. And right it's so cool. Uh, we've only got time for one more song. Okay. Which I'm sad. I don't want to. And yeah, let's do one more song. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in here Indeed. on Manao at Home with Marty Dread. Of course, don't forget to tip the talents. You see the Venmo up there. And I just want to give a big thank you to my team, which, of course, Backlit Buddha Studios, Tempa Noor, Johnny and Michelle, and, of course, Cody and Kevin behind the scenes of CQ Audio. I've even got Stephen holding here today, Woo! my rock star photographer. Shooting taking stars, some sweet <laughs> Shooting stars. Um, <laughs> taking the best photos of all of our Sonic soldiers. And, yeah, if you just tuned in, don't forget this is going to be available on online forever uh, you can go to monotoradio.com or you can go to our youtube that's right Monato radio is a youtube we're so fancy but i'm really happy to be here and we'll be back next month with one of my favorite musicians who i've worked a lot with and i don't know if he gets enough love on the island he's a drummer his name's james bowersox bowersox that's my guy isn't it exciting i'm gonna get to do a drum show so oh, he's gonna fantastic. show us everything from jazz to metal and how he has he's been able right to guy. make a career of it. And he's one of the best 
drummers like yeah, if, and like him bomb. and paul marchetti two of my favorites on the island and it's funny because james looks up to paul which is always a beautiful that's nice i get and to then, play with paul f- this saturday night oh wonderful so. and then that's going to be july 7th and then the following week july 14th we're going to have our soul sister gail swanson in the studio hey! yeah it's a really exciting summer and i'm just really proud of the show so thank you guys so much for supporting without further ado one more song i'm so sad i don't want the show oh, to end man. marty it's been one so cool. More song. One more song. And thank you to your son, Charlie, who's been nothing but a delight. He's in the back room. He's in the green room. He's cool, chilling with his headphones on. He's chilling. He's got yeah. some big plans for Dad for Father's Day, right? Oh, and happy sure. Father's Day his to all the daddies the out day there. Before, so. Oh, wonderful. It's going to be a big weekend for us. All right, guys. One last special gem from Marty Dre. Um, I want to play this song for my parents because I've mentioned them probably 14 times during this interview. <laughs> um, neither of them are with us anymore. Of course, my dad died when I was eight. And my mom transitioned about 12 years ago. Um, like any couple, they had their, you know, their rough moments and stuff. And I, I saw a lot of stuff when I was a child that I probably shouldn't have seen. But I think deep inside, they, they had a, the kind of love that, that you want in your life, you know. They, they, had the kind of, they met as friends. They were friends for years before they ever had, you know, like, becoming a couple and having kids and all that stuff. So um, I cannot take credit for this song. This is a song by Mark Cohn. Mark Cohn is, uh, and I, I choose this song for a very special reason. I feel like... There are songwriters out there that are known for one song. And this guy is known for Walking in Memphis. That's his big hit. But he's such a fantastic songwriter. So I wanted to bring light to him as a songwriter and also to honor my parents because I feel like there's no way I would have been a musician without their support. And there's no way I would even, obviously I wouldn't be here unless my dad impregnated my mom. <laughs> but, but, but I'm, they just, a team I'm just very, team very, I'm very <laughs> grateful. And I, I, I very rarely honor them publicly, like with my words. So I, I wanted Beautiful. to just make sure that they... Wherever they are, they knew that I'm thankful that they brought me into this world because it really has been a wonderful life thus far, and I thank them. So this is called True Companion, which is, I'm sure they'll be slow dancing to this in heaven. (laughs) Thanks to Steve Grimes for this guitar. Baby, I've been searching like everybody else I can't say nothing different about myself Sometimes I'm an angel and sometimes I'm cruel When it comes to love, I'm just another fool I'll climb the mountains And I'll swim the sea There ain't no act of God, girl Keep you safe from me my arms are reaching out Out across this canyon I'm asking you to be my true companion Cause I need a true companion Would you be my true companion? I need a true Don't you dare try to walk away I've got my heart set on our wedding day I've got this vision of a girl in white Made my decision that it's you all right When I take your hands, girl I watch my heart set sail I'll take your trembling fingers And I'll lift up your veil Then I'll take you home Head with wild abandon Make love to you just like a true companion Cause now I have a true companion You agreed to be my true companion Now you're my true And when the years have done irreparable harm I can see us walking slowly arm in arm Just like that couple on the corners do Girl, I will always be in love with you And when I look in your eyes I still see those sparks And when the shadows fall And the room gets dark 
then when I leave this earth And I'm out there where the angels stand I'll be out there looking for my true companion Cause I had a true companion Yeah, she was my true companion Mom was my dad's true companion Thank you, guys. Standing ovation. We can't. Uh, we can't, I can't Nowhere's got to go, so we can't. I know. He wants another one. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Marty. You've been such an amazing guest. I had no doubt. Like, I wasn't nervous at all. Like, sometimes I prep too much. Today, I kept it real smooth. Good. And I'm just, thank you so much for taking this journey with me. I know we kind of been playing phone tag. Did you have a good time? <laughs> I truly did. <laughs> I'm really glad. You know, I was supposed to be watching game six of the NBA Finals. <laughs> but I made a conscious choice. I'm like, I'm going to be live on Manao today. Thank you. I appreciate it. You can still catch some of the games. Nah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Who are you rooting for? Golden State I can't or? say because I like friends, not enemies. Okay, and that's I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. But I am from Massachusetts. <laughs> no, you can follow Marty Dread on Instagram and Facebook. You're doing a great job, by the way, on your Instagram. You, it's love. so delicious. We didn't get to talk enough about gardening, but I'll talk to you about that Mind a little by. bit more. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can go to MartyDread.com. He's got fantastic story and all of his discography up there. And, of course, visit MinotoRadio.com. You guys, thank you so much for being a part of Manao at Home. I'm Trishta Dish from the Weekly Dish and Beyond. We'll see you next time. Keep it real for the homeschool and take care of each other. Peace and love. Indeed. Aloha. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Ahui ho. Yeah, that was so great. That was probably one of the best shows. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, that was freaking. Uh, also, Pono's up there. Pono's here. Come here, Pono. Oh, it's so, I know, right? I'm a mess over here. Oh, she's coming <laughs> for the hug. Hey, buddy. Hey, she's coming she in hot. Look out. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Good luck. Did you get to catch some of the show? Uh, I heard a little bit. Heard a little bit? Yeah. This is Pono.